Okay, when I started printing, the first thing I printed was this dragon. It may be a little hard to see because of the fact that it's white on white there, as far as the coloring, but this dragon is almost three inches tall and is completely made of plastic. It took about five and a half or so hours to print. And when it did finish, it had lots of little hairs on it. It's hard to see. Maybe I can get to to see one of there. See that little hair that's right here? They were everywhere. It's like old man whiskers all over the place. And when I cleaned them up as best I could, if you notice on that wing there that I'm trying to show, can you see a line of bumps kind of going down that direction right through there? That line of bumps, and let me see if I can go at a different angle to get to it. I have not been able to figure out how to completely get rid of those bumps to clean this up. But I am happy with the detail. If you look at the ridges on the throat there, and then the feet. Feet came out just great. That took, like I said, five and a half hours to print. The next thing I tried to print was I wanted to print a musical instrument. So I printed this whistle. Now that's a little tape still stuck on the bottom and I left that on there so I could illustrate a point. When you print with this, the tape tends to stick onto the bottom of the plastic pretty well and it's hard to get off. This one did not play. I'm trying to see if I can get to it right here and it's really hard to see but right there there's an extra hole in between these two holes therefore when I try to blow this that's the best whistle I get out of it so I printed another whistle now this whistle did not come out of the printer uh, brown and white there it came out solid white but what I'm trying to do is to smooth out the edges so I'm using Bondo putty which was on one website was a suggestion on how to clean this up and this is and I could blow it louder but I'm, I'm at church right now so that would disturb a lot of people but it printed very well and this one feels very very solid I could put this around my neck and, and go hiking go camping go running well no I can't go running and I really can't go hiking or camping because I'm not fit for that but you know what I mean it is a very sturdy whistle and it's got 118 dB um, volume to it and I will link you to each of these things and give you the pros and cons of them once I got through so I decided I wanted to do a logo and when I did the logo I used the Microsoft's 3d builder program which came with Windows 10 at least it may be on some of the other versions and I did the dragon blogger logo okay and the lettering actually came out fairly good, except, can you see how bumpy that is? I tried to clean that as best I could, and I actually, at the bottom, if you look, where it says TEC, and then there's nothing there, and then you've got the rest of the letters, I actually snapped off part of the lettering because of trying to clean it. So that particular print program was not very satisfactory. I also tried a different type of tape underneath this one. And I guess some of these 3D printers are hot plated where the plate actually heats up. There's no heating element on this plate. It's just a, an aluminum plate or a tin plate or something like that. And it does not heat up. It gets a little bit more maybe, but not by much. Um, and so when I pr printed with this one, I used a blue tape, blue painting tape. And you can see on most of the sides, it's flush at the bottom. But right here, it lifted up. The tape actually came unadhered to the, the bed and lifted itself up and it printed curved. I wasn't too happy with that. So then I tried another project. And the next project I tried was this. Now, if I take this and I hold it up to the light, you can kind of see a faint impression of something. I will tell you those are three of my granddaughters sitting on a tractor, and you're going to have to take my word for it. You can also notice that there was a hole in the very center, right there, and so that didn't turn out so good. 
My next one to print was from a website that I found that allowed me to take 2D images and turn them into 3D. And I was a lot more impressed with this. The lettering is all uniform on top. It is easier to read. However, this printer does not print small lettering. I blackened in and colored in red everything that's colored on this using a uh, permanent marker. But that is supposed to be Dragon Blogger technology. Unfortunately, it says D, maybe an R, I don't know, uh, two dots, and I don't know what the rest of the letters are on those. But it gives a general impression of the lettering, and once you know what it says, then you can say, oh yeah, that's Dragon Blogger technology. Pretty sturdy. Again, there's something to note about the back, which I hope will sh I can show you here on the, the... Let me get here where we can get a contrast of color, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, what I want to point out is there are lines where the seams of the tape uh, brushed up against each other. So you have tape, tape, brushed up against each other, and you can see the line in my fingers there. Well, that line also transmits on the back of the plastic as well. Now, lastly, I printed this one. Now, this is a, another print, but if you look, okay, you can actually see more of a face. Let me get it more in the light. There we go. This came out absolutely perfect. That is my granddaughter, four years old. She's my sweetheart. And it looks like a photograph out of plastic. Uh, those are some of the things that I've printed already. I did try to print something for my granddaughter to use for Halloween, a Pokeball. Um, unfortunately, the bottom did not print properly. Uh, and so that became just a little bit of an issue. What I want to point out, and I'm going to turn and face it for a moment, is that I do not believe that the mistakes in these are printer errors necessarily. I think a lot of them are trial and error, user errors, because these are the first things I've ever printed and the only things I've ever printed. And prior to getting this printer, I never knew anything about 3D printing. There are some recommended settings and they come in the instructions. Uh, when you get the uh, micro SD card and you look at the information on it, it will tell you exactly what you need as far as the recommended settings. One thing that I did do after the first print was that I made a change to one of the settings and later on I'm going to actually show you the software and I'm going to show you the settings that have been set up in there the way that that we've been instructed to set them up and then I'll show you the one change I've made so far and I've only made one change and as my daddy tells me if you're going to make changes to something make one change at a time see how it affects everything before you make another change because if you make too many all at once you don't know what happened when things go bad or when they go good uh, so I think the more I play with this the more I get custom to it the more I get used to it uh, there may be external temperature factors I live in a, a mobile home it's been hot and cold lately um, we get a breeze come through uh, that could affect the uh, print quality. The more I uh, study about this, the more I'm going to learn about this, and certainly the much better I'm going to become at this. Um, but I can tell you one thing. I'm hooked. I actually enjoyed this. I actually like this, and there are some projects that I really, 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 really want to print, but my print surface is too small. Now, when I pr show you the software later on, I'm going to show you how you can resize some of your objects because that dragon that I printed was actually in, uh, in standard size. It was a, an inch and a half to two inches too tall for this printer. I resized it down to a smaller size. Now, that's okay for a lot of items, but let's say you resize a musical instrument. Guess what you've done? Not only have you made a smaller version of the musical instrument, but you've changed the pitch and tone of that musical instrument quite a bit. One of the things that I was really excited about when I first started looking was I could print 
a ukulele. My son plays a ukulele. That is not large enough to print a ukulele, even if I broke it down into smaller sizes. So when you go to get a 3D printer, make some intelligent decisions as far as Okay, with this one, this is what I'm going to be able to print. With this, I can print small items. I can print D&D characters for those who like to play D&D. I can print dice here. I can print some small cars and some small toys, some small trinkets. If I wanted to introduce my children to fossils, but I don't have a fossil, I can get a 3D model of a fossil and print it out on one of these, and they'll at least know what a fossil looks like. The one thing I did notice, and, and I'm going to point back to it. Let me find it. Oh, it's upside down. This one, since I did do the coloring on it, I used the permanent markers when I colored it, and it took the ink very, very well. When I finish with this one, and I will post the results once I have finished with this one, like I said, this is the Bondo putty. I still got to resand this. I've got to shape it a little bit more. I've got to smooth it out a little bit more, but then I've got to actually apply some kind of paint to it. Once I've actually painted this and got it all nice and pretty and got it all ready for display, I'm going to show you the end results of this, and I'm going to show you some of the results as we go along. And I do have a before picture. In fact, if you look, I don't know if you can see uh, right there on the inside, you can see the ridges or lines right inside of there. Remember, there's going to be lines because this prints one layer at a time. It doesn't just, whoop, there's a, there's a whistle there. It prints one layer, one layer, one layer, one layer, over and over and over and over, which is one of the reasons why it takes so long. Also, something to note, this is not a solid structure. This is, and you can see my hand, there it is. Four fingers behind it, it the wingtips just almost go over the top on one side there. This is 17 feet of plastic. 17 feet of plastic went into this small little model. So you would expect it to be fairly heavy, but actually when you watch it being printed and if you look at the video of, of showing it printed, you'll notice that there's hashes marks and there's actually blank spots in there. So this is amazingly light. This is very lightweight. And with the exception of the wings, it's fairly strong and sturdy. Uh, I say the wings because I actually uh, let my granddaughter look at it and she picked it up and she came to me with a tear-filled eyes and said, Papa, I broke your dragon. Well, super glued it back together and it's just fine. Well, this one's a little bit long, but I wanted to give you my thoughts and show you some of the projects that I've worked on and some of the ideas that I worked on. And I actually enjoyed this. For DragonBlogger.com, this is Raymond Stapleton wishing you a great evening, even better tomorrow. And stay tuned for the part about the software. Disclaimer, this product was provided to the author to do a review. All opinions are 100% authors and authors alone. For more information, visit bit.ly slash dbdisclose. To have your product or brand showcased on DragonBlogger, visit bit.ly slash reviewmyproduct. Thank you for watching.